Hello there. I'm Carl Brown. Over the years, there have been numerous reports, numerous documentaries. Everyone has been writing about Guyana, my beautiful land of Guyana, South America. Some have been positive, some have been negative. Everyone has had their own opinions and their own versions about Guyana. But, like everyone else, I think it's time I tell you about my country, Guyana, South America. Creole International Magazine, separated by water but united by culture, presents Creole Architecture Guyana, South America, Georgetown's Heritage Trail. The Meridian Pegasus Hotel was the first international hotel constructed in Guyana. A plot known as King's Land, adjacent to the sea wall, was allocated to the British Overseas Airways Corporation to erect this structure. Built on a foundation of green heart logs, the hotel was opened in 1969. The Umana Yana, as it is known, was constructed to host the meeting of non-aligned nations in 1972 by the YY. Poles straight as arrows, round wood saplings, vines and lush green truly fronds culled from palm trees were used in the construction of this structure. In 1999, the Umaniana was declared a national monument by the government of Guyana. Sadly, this building was destroyed by fire in September 2014. The African Freedom Fighters Monument was unveiled by former President Lyndon Forbes Sampson Burnham on Namibia Day, 26th of August 1974. These four tall bull forehead greenheart poles, encased in a jasper, stand on a granite boulder, constitute a monument to those who have struggled and continue to struggle for the freedom from human bondage. The Guyana Marine Turtle Monument, which depicts a newly hatched leatherback turtle emerging into the world from its shell, was erected by the Guyana Turtle Marine Turtle Conservation Society to sensitize the populace of Guyana's natural heritage in 2001. The lighthouse was constructed in 1830. It stands 103 feet over Water Street and the roofs of many civic and residential buildings. This imposing brick structure was erected by the British to replace a wooden lighthouse built by the Dutch. The Canadian High Commission is a fine example of Georgetown's built heritage. It once housed the Sisters of Mercy from 1949 to 1978. In 1977, this building was acquired by the Canadian government, the establishment of a permanent office for their diplomatic relations with Guyana. The Marara windows, stained glass windows, louvered windows and the skylight window are noteworthy features of this magnificent building. The Red House was once the residence of Sir Eustace Wilford, Speaker of the Assembly. It was acquired by the colony of British Guyana in 1925 and was also used as a residence by several colonial secretaries. Former presidents Dr. Chetty Jaggan and Mrs. Janet Jaggan also occupied this building. Today, this building houses the Chetty Jaggan Research Centre. Austin House was constructed circa 1842. This dwelling was known as Kingston House. In 1892, it was renamed in recognition of the tremendous contributions by the first Anglican Bishop of Guyana, William Piercy Austin. The original building was not always located on the present site, but it was reported to have been closer to the street. 
However, the building was removed westwards to the present site because the bishop's children often threw objects at passers-by. The Kingston Methodist Mans was most likely constructed around 1832, when the original Kingston Methodist Church was erected. The utilitarian demerara windows and the skylight with louvered vents are noteworthy features of this building. Sadly, this building no longer exists. The Inter-American Development Bank was constructed in 1858. This edifice was the residence of J. Baptiste. In 1981, the office of the Inter-American Development Bank was established in this three-storied wooden structure. The Demerara Locomotive Station was formerly the main office for the East Coast Demerara Railway. It was built on the site of a former burial ground, which was originally company path between the plantations Yvelieri and La Bourgarde in the 19th century. Joseph Bradshaw Sharples was contracted for the erection of this railway station and others along the Georgetown Rosignol Railway for the sum of $85,000. The Prime Minister's residence with its Widow's Walk small tower was purchased by Booker Brothers in 1911 and in 1962 it was bought by the British government and subsequently established as the home of the British High Commissioner. This building was designated as the official residence of the Prime Minister of Guyana in 1987 when the government of Guyana acquired it then. State House, which was formerly known as Government House, has a rich and distinguished heritage. It was constructed circa 1820 on a plot of land belonging to William Piercy Austin, the first Bishop of British Guyana. It was the residence of the colony's governors who leased this building at a cost of £240 monthly. In 1852 and 1863, Ordinances were passed, legislating the purchase of the building to establish an official residence for the British governors. The Walter Roth Museum of Anthropology, which houses the anthropological and the archaeological aspects of Amerindian life in Guyana, was named in honor of an Englishman, Dr. Walter Roth, the pioneer for research in this area. In 2002, this edifice was restored by the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport. The Church of the Sacred Heart was designed by Father Sherembe, an Italian. However, it was the Maltesian architect Cesar Castellani who is credited with the design of the impressive main facade, which is a splendid example of Renaissance architecture. The church was constructed during 1859 to 1861 and was opened at midnight on the 25th of December 1861 at a midnight mass. The Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport was originally known as Avery House. Constructed around 1920, this building was the headquarters of the bauxite industry of Guyana, Pitco House. Since 1999, this building has housed the Office of the Ministry of Culture, Youth and Sport.